On today's show, we'll be talking about strange beings, past loved ones, spirits caught on camera, and much more. All coming up on this episode of Paranormal Mysteries. Thank you for joining me and welcome. I am your host, Nick Ryan. I hope everyone had a great weekend. And before we start, I'd like to say thank you to everyone for the well wishes and kind thoughts over the last week. It's helped immensely. I'd also like to say thank you to Aaron, Bradley, Kelly, Carolyn, Perum, Asher's Fluffers, Carrie, Olga, Dean, and Lindsay for their support and generosity. If you enjoy the show, please remember to subscribe, share, and review the podcast. This helps us by helping new listeners to discover the show. And if you'd like to support us even further by becoming a patron or by donating, please visit us at patreon.com slash paranormalmysteries or at buymeacoffee.com slash paranormal. These links and others can be found in the show notes. And if you've encountered the paranormal and would like to share your story, please email me at paranormalmysteriespodcast at gmail.com. All experiences, no matter how big or small, are always welcome. And of course, with that in mind, our first story comes to us from James, and James's story is called Little Person. James says, Hello, Nick. I've been listening to the podcast for about two weeks, and I'm almost all caught up. I wanted to share this story, as I have not heard anything like it so far on here. This happened in 2011 in my hometown in Oklahoma. I had woken up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom, and this is nothing out of the ordinary, as it happens a lot. As I was in the bathroom, I felt as though I was being watched from the window next to the toilet. I scare pretty easily, so I thought nothing of it, and I ignored the feeling. A short time passed, and I was growing more uneasy. I then found the courage to look out of the window, only to see a small figure with its hands pressed on the outside window sill, looking at me. Upon me seeing it, It dropped and began to run around the side of my house to the front. I quickly ran out of the bathroom to the front window in my house to see if I could see it. I looked and saw a small figure about the size of a toddler sprinting across the highway into a field, and it then disappeared. Just a little background, I have three close neighbors who all have kids around my age, but no children. After seeing this and not believing what I had just seen, I checked the time to see what it was and it was 3.40, much too early for anyone to be awake. I think I was in shock, but I went to bed anyway. The next morning, I woke up and thought about what had happened. It sounded crazy even now, so I just thought it had been a weird dream. I went to the bathroom to the same window and looked out. To my surprise, I saw a five-gallon bucket right at the base of the window, as if something had used it as a step stool to peer into the window. I then realized that what I had seen had actually happened, and I just had a weird feeling after that. There is no folklore or any crazy stories in my town, so I have no clue what I might have seen, and I have not seen it since. If any other listeners have had a similar experience, please feel free to reach out to me and share your story. I'm sorry for the length, but I really wanted to share. Thank you for taking the time to read my story and keep up the great work. I look forward to future episodes. I reached out to James and asked for additional details regarding the creature that he witnessed, and James had this to say. I could not make out anything that the creature was wearing, but it had human features like the eyes and mouth, and moved with agility like a human, but it was no more than two and a half feet tall. I'm sorry that I can't recall more. Even to this day I thought it was just a fever dream, until I got some validation from my siblings who remember it too. They never actually saw it, but they all remember a bucket being under the window like something small had been trying to peer inside, and the same night that I saw the creature, my sister told me that she had heard scratching on that window when she had been taking a bath. That just made me feel that I wasn't crazy, and I actually did experience it. Our next story of the night comes from Jandy, and Jandy's story is called Haunted Home. Jandy says, Hello, Nick. I love your podcast, and I am hooked on your work. 
Thank you for a safe place to tell our stories. When I was 10 years old, my parents and I moved into a rental property, which my parents then purchased a year later. We were not told about the history of the home, so we had no clue that it was highly haunted. I remember being a teen and having vivid dreams that would come true. For years, I dreamt of a blinding light shone into my eyes. I could not see anything around me, and I would have to feel my way around to get anywhere. This dream happened over and over for years, until one day. I had to have an unplanned eye surgery, and when I left the clinic, it happened. All I could see, even with sunglasses, was blinding light, and I could not find my car. I had to feel my way in the parking lot, until I found my car. I got in but could not drive, and I called my friend to pick me up, and I never had that dream again. Around the same time frame, a friend of my family came over to visit our home and brought their little boy. He began to complain that he also couldn't see and was blinded by light. His mother had to have him spiritually cleansed because she was told that a spirit of a blind man was attached to him. There was no doubt that something paranormal was happening. Some of the weird things that happened were items being misplaced or moved and disembodied voices that came from nowhere. At age 18, I got engaged, and my ring disappeared in the house. I never found it, but it was for the best. I broke it off because my ex became very violent, and I had to get a restraining order to keep him away. Years later, while sweeping in my room, I found an antique engagement ring from the 20s or 30s era in the wooden baseboard. It was not the ring that disappeared, and I later found out that the woman who originally lived in the house was murdered by her jealous and violent husband. I really think that she was trying to keep me from the same fate that she endured. As for the ring, I am thinking that it was hers. We lived there for a total of about 15 years, and my mother ran a small assisted living for the elderly and had about 7 or 8 patients throughout 15 years. Of course, being elderly and in the late stages of their lives, some of them passed away in our home. This opened the door to the dead. My mom hired my aunt to help her with the patients, and one morning while caring for a patient, my aunt screamed for help and ran out of the room. She told my mom to look at her forearms. An unseen force had grabbed her by the wrists and shook her. It left red marks on her wrists, and my mother said that when she looked at my aunt, that she was pale and looked different. My mom then said it was a spirit that tried to attack her, and she felt the energy go right through her body and then leave the house. We saw many strange figures walking around the property, just out of the corner of our eye. Doors opened and closed, etc. My television would turn on every day at 4 p.m. and tune in to Baywatch, the same channel and time, every day. When I moved out, I took my TV with me, and it never happened again. We moved to a new house and on to new hauntings. But that's for another email. Thanks for your amazing podcast, and keep up the good work. Jandy Our next story of the night comes to us from Joseph, and Joseph's story is called Demon in My Bathroom. Joseph says, Hey Nick, I have been a big fan of your podcast for a year so far, and love listening to you at night. I am not used to experiencing the paranormal on a common basis. I have only had four paranormal events but this one is the most recent, and truthfully, the scariest that has happened to me. I live in Colorado, in a recently built town, and I am the first owner of my house. The reason I bring this up is so that you and the others know that there was no one of demonic interest before me. In my house, I have experienced strange things happening, like random holes appearing in my walls, and doors slamming while I'm on the other side of the house. The strange thing is, I haven't seen the thing causing it, until tonight. I was cleaning my house, and today was an oddly calm one, with no stress or anything to upset me. However, this all changed when I was getting ready for bed. I grabbed some shorts and put them on the toilet seat cover. This is needed information. When I got in my shower, the water was hotter than normal, and there was a good two inches of ice around my house, but I didn't pay any attention to it. I started to think that something was up when my shower light was shorting out, or that's what I thought. Then I noticed a huge dark muscular entity behind me. I kid you not, my legs gave out, and as I was falling to the ground, the thing's arms launched forward at me, 
picking me up and throwing me halfway across the room. I happened to sleep with a cross on my nightstand due to other events, so I crawled because my legs were still paperweights, and I grabbed the cross. When I pointed it in the direction of the demon, it picked up my shorts and put them in front of his face, and quite simply vanished. I haven't been able to locate my shorts, either. I hope this finds you and the listeners well, and if there are any ways that I can purify my house, please let me know. Thanks for reading my story, and good night. I contacted Joseph after this email, and gave him the name of a couple people that I thought could help. But if you have some advice or thoughts for Joseph, please send me an email, and I'll be sure to forward it on to him. Our next story comes to us from Mike, and Mike says, Hey Nick, I wanted to send you an email in the hopes that it's yet another story that your fans can enjoy. I have heard many stories on your show, and have had experiences with just about all types except Bigfoot and UFOs. The story I'm about to share is what led to me actually becoming a paranormal investigator. While doing this, I have found out that I am what's called a light worker. It is something I enjoy doing, and I have grown to love helping spirits cross over, and helping to get rid of any dark entities. I apologize for its lengthy content, but there is a lot to this story that I'm keeping out, as it would be much longer. But this is the basic rundown. Growing up, my stepdad was a very hard-working man. He drove a truck so he was always on the road, and home mostly on weekends. He was the typical tough, bearded man that very rarely showed any emotion, Not even a little I love you or a hug. This is probably due to the fact that he didn't really have a father growing up, so he did what he knew. Let's fast forward to 1998, before my little brother was born. One morning at work, while he was strapping down a load to haul, his truck was hit by another, and he flew off the bed, crushing discs in his back. This led to surgery after surgery, and pill after pill. Eventually, these pills became a major problem as addiction set in. Over the course of eight years, he became more hostile, angry, and sometimes even violent. He was never abusive towards my mom, except for one time that I can recall, during which I got in the middle, and it wasn't a good time for him. Due to this addiction, we grew farther and farther apart. His addiction turned to paranoia and placing blame, and I lost count of how many times I was accused of stealing his pills. At age 18, I had finally had enough and moved from the house. After I moved out, our relationship began to grow apart. Oftentimes, we would find ourselves being civil, but there was still that hint of hatred in me from seeing what he was turning into. He was turning to bone and skin, just hanging off his face. He was beginning to get sores and bruises all over his body. At times, he was even hard to look at or even be around. Eventually, my parents moved into a new house, A while after this, my dad and I got into a big fight, which led to words being said, and me disappearing for a while. I had no association with him, my younger siblings, or my mother. I just refused to be around. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to paint an evil image of him. There were still good days with him, even during the quarrels and addiction. He was still the man that even when high, would have given you the shirt off his back. I just kept reminding myself of what he was like before his accident, and I kept telling myself, it's not him, it's the drugs. One of the last memories I had was when my mom had finally had enough and made my dad leave. Because of this, I decided to try and mend the relationship with my mom and come around more. My dad, hearing I was over, decided to show up with a baseball bat and threaten harm upon me. This resorted to the cops being called and my dad being arrested. He was ordered to go to rehab, which he left and resorted back to drugs, and my mom allowing him back. Again, I left the situation and stopped talking to them. One night as I was laying down for bed, I heard a pounding on the front door. I awoke to answer it, and to my heartbreak it was my sister in hysterics, grabbing and hugging me and saying, He's gone. I broke down. I was upset as I never got to say goodbye, and the last time I saw him was when he was being arrested. I felt guilt. When he passed away, I put everything aside and helped my mom around the house, but the one thing I refused to do was stay the night, as he had passed in that house. I was scared, upset, and curious, 
I just wanted to see him one last time. My 21st birthday was two months after he had passed. My mom took me to see Def Leppard and Journey. We sat third row, and all I could do was picture my dad there with us, as he loved those bands, and I wished for nothing more than for him to have been there with us. That night, with it being late, I decided to stay at my mom's and sleep on the couch. As I laid there, all I kept asking was, Did you love me? Am I going to be okay? Are we going to be okay? I am sorry for everything. Once I fell asleep, I remember floating above my body, and I saw myself sleeping on the couch. As an investigator now, I now know this to be an out-of-body experience. I then saw myself walk from the couch to the door leading to the kitchen. As I turned the corner in the kitchen, into the dining room, there stood my dad. Young, smiling, healthy, just the way I remembered him growing up. He was surrounded by the brightest light possible, and focused on me. He looked at me, he hugged me, and said, I love you, and everything will be okay. At this point, I woke up, looked around, and felt relief. Doing more and more research in the field, I've learned that he was there to communicate with me. You know when a loved one is there to communicate when they are surrounded by light and focused on you and make you the point behind the dream. I have plenty more stories which I might submit, but wanted to start with a nice one. Thank you, Nick, for all you do, and keep up the great work. Mike Our next story comes to us from Katya, and Katya's story is called Demon or Ghost? Katya says, So this was a few years ago, and we had been living in this apartment for a year or two already with my parents. Me and my mom have always been able to feel things and occasionally see things, but this one time I had family staying over, and me and my cousin were staying up watching TV and playing around. Please note that this whole building is somewhat old, and you can hear people coming up the stairs or hear someone coming down the long hallway. My aunt and grandma had been staying in the living room, and it was late, and the door was completely closed, so as not to disturb anyone sleeping, and the door had swung open, and we then looked at each other, thinking that it was our aunt, because she would often mess around with us. We called out to her, but she then texted us and said that she was laying down. I then saw a slight outline of a tall person in the doorway. My stomach was feeling uneasy, and then all of a sudden, the door slammed shut. We then locked the door and continued watching TV in the quiet. While living there, both me and my mother had experiences, and I have always felt as if I wasn't supposed to be there. Our next stories of the night come from Jesse, and Jesse's stories are called Saved Bird and Photo of a Ghost. Jesse says, My grandpa was in Vietnam when the chemical gas Agent Orange was sprayed so my aunts and uncles were born severely handicapped. In 2007, my aunt Dee Dee passed away. My aunt was handicapped and could never walk or talk, but she had a huge personality, and she was always laughing and smiling. In our backyard, we had this couch-sized swing that she always loved to swing on and enjoy the nice days outside with the family. So on the day of her funeral, my whole family was in the kitchen, where we have a perfect view of the swing, through the glass back door. We then see a tiny bird sitting on the bar above her swing. My mom quickly snaps three photos in a row with her flip phone, and the bird continued to sit there. It did not fly away or anything. About a month later, I'm playing around on my mom's phone, and I look closer at the three photos. In the first photo, below the bird, there is a huge white or light patch, laying on the swing. Part of my aunt's handicap was that her hip stuck out really far on one side, and her legs were bent or crooked at a certain angle. This white shadow was exactly the shape of her body, laying in the swing. In the second photo, with the bird still sitting in the same spot, the white light in the swing is now gone, and slightly higher above the swing, but below the bird is a white ball. At the top of the swing, maybe like four feet above the bird, is what now looks like three glowing stairs, just white step-shaped lines, definitely not a cloud, and it was not in the first photo, nor did the sky look like that on that day. In the third photo, the bird is still in the same place. All the white marks, the ball, and the stairs are all gone, 
but at the very top of the image in the sky, there are streak marks, totally different from the lines in the first pictures, and this looks more like the streaks that happen naturally in the sky sometimes. But the sky did not look like that, and it's not in the other photos either. So, I personally think that we watched my aunt go to the next life, or hopefully heaven. It could be argued that it was a glare, or just bad phone quality, but it seemed too detailed to be anything but something unexplainable. My next story is about a dream that my mom had about a week after my grandfather's death. My mom says that in the dream they are in the backyard, and my grandpa looks pissed. So she says, Dad, what's wrong? And he picks up an empty rusted birdcage with the door open and says, It's been six days, Lee. It's been six days. Then she wakes up. After asking everybody in the house, she found out that nobody had fed my grandpa's bird in exactly six days. Everyone assumed that someone else had done it. Lola the bird is still alive and happy and healthy. We've thought about if maybe it was just my mom's subconscious, but my mom would have had no way of subconsciously knowing that it had been exactly six days, so I think maybe my grandpa came to my mom in a dream to save his bird. If you do read this and or share it on the podcast, I want to say thank you so much, and I hope you and everyone stay safe and has a good day. Love you guys. Jesse. As we come to the end of tonight's episode, I'd like to say thank you to all of you for tuning in. And a special thank you goes out to James, Jandy, Joseph, Mike, Katia, and Jesse for sharing their experiences. If you've witnessed something that you can't explain, please contact me at Paranormal Mysteries Podcast at gmail.com. Or visit us at ParanormalMysteriesPodcast.com and click on the Tell Your Story link. All of our contact information can be found in the show notes. Until next time, I hope you all have a safe and healthy beginning to your week, and we'll see you back here on Wednesday with our next episode. From everyone at Paranormal Mysteries, thank you for listening, and please remember, don't wait for the unknown to come to you. Get out there and find it.